on this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast, The Unsolved Mystery of the Tran Family. And speaking of mysteries, pull my finger. Always funny, never funny. Discuss. Let's do this. Welcome to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. I'm Diana. I'm Liz. And this week we're going to talk about Season 7, Episode 21, so close to the end of the season. Reading is fundamental. Yep, we are close. However, there are 23 episodes this season, so we still have yeah. two more to go of, I don't know, maybe Leviathans will end, maybe they won't. I don't know how this, these things end. You do. I don't. That's the difference. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't say how they end or then I'll be spoiling it. And this is spoiler I free, I think. Sure. <sighs> what have you been up to? Uh, so the other night I was driving through my neighborhood and well, like not my neighborhood, like GPS, like got and you know was haunted and like took me a weird way back from things and ended up in this neighborhood and these people had for christmas decorations like this giant rooster santa which then i immediately like almost hit a trash can because i was like sliding off the road being like what the fuck there's a giant rooster santa and like taking pictures and then of course babe went and tracked down like he found where the giant rooster santa came from Mm -hmm. and that was tractor supply who knew Who for Christmas decorations? Well, there is this entire line of, it starts with the G, uh, but like they are a specific, I try to find out like where their stuff is manufactured and I'm guessing like China or something because I couldn't find it on their website, (laughs) but they are specifically like the company that does them started with uh, the, the, with the Billy Bass. Okay. That, that, that that, that tracks. That tracks. that company, so they went big, from was making... Big, was it Big Mouth Billy Bass? Big, Ma- big Mouth Billy Bass, yeah. So they yeah. went from that into doing inflatables and other just rando things. So they have the inflatables, they had the the rooster, the silky chicken, which is amazing. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, what else did they have? They had a, an alpaca. There were, oh, there were rocket, like the rocket cows, cows with yeah, udders with the, with their yeah. udder bags well, and yeah. Santa. And so Santa. they weren't just okay. like rockhead and like, there was like cows. a round Santa. Santa. Yeah. Lime cake. And then, uh, they also then had like things that weren't inflatables, including a goat, which I can't find. Mm. And then also a twerking pig. And I was dry. I was on Texas road back roads for, many a long time this weekend and whatever back roads have in Texas, but tractor supplies. So yeah. I stopped at one and I walked in and like, there was barely any Christmas things out anymore. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it's like, too- so y'all shove this shit down our face in like August. And then now yeah. it's not even here. Oh. And like, and I was like, so I'm walking around just being like, I can't like, so there's barely Christmas. I'm just like, man, I'm going to ask. And like, it was like, Oh, do I just like, do you not ask? Because like, so and like finally had to walk out of someone was like, can I help you? And I'm like, do you have the twerking pig? (laughs) 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 Like you're doing a deal. Yeah. You know, like, so I I need a little twerking pig over here. And she was like, thankfully, like, so she's like, yeah, somebody like had come by earlier looking for one. And so they, she had taken, gone and gotten them out of the back. So apparently they'd already put them away. Like, why would you put the twerking and pig away? One? No, like they just oh, okay. like, we're done. Like we're done yeah. with the pig. Like no more twerking. Like Christmas is over. No more twerking pigs. Lame. <laughs> but it is quite spectacular and the butt kind of moves and like. Its own, I don't know. Like each cheek is each. She can clap her. Like she doesn't clap. Like I wish she the cheeks clapped. Up. But they, yeah, they, they do. She can do the individual cheek thing. Which I wonder if, if there is a name for that in twerking. Let me know. Like I would like to know what the name for. I, I would not. I don't want to know. 
Well, if there's a name for it, like it, it's yeah. a dance move, right? And if there's sure. a muscle, there is sure. a major muscle control. If you're making one cheek move and not the other, like that's a talent. That, that that takes some practice. Isolate, butt isolation, Maybe. man. That's a it's a thing. Yeah. That's, that's what exciting. I did. I bought I bought a twerking pig, and I also though I didn't see like the rooster or the chicken until I was walking out, and the rooster was like a hundred and fifty bucks or something stupid, and, but the chicken was like sixty dollars, and I was like, Damn. man, so, yeah, like a hundred over a hundred way no, but like sixty. Like that's nothing. That's a nice. That's a nice meal. It's fine. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know. The and, and the chicken I'm only buying to put on Diana's lawn. Like I probably won't even tell. Like I will probably just fly to Dallas, put the chicken on the lawn, and leave, and just not I'm tell like, her. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> that's what I- uh, so i don't know the uh, silky santa chicken. cox uh, <laughs> it is uh, like for the cox house I well, then you need the rooster i mean I know, I know. Uh, that's why i, I got excited imagine I like, that rooster dude, in oak cliff <laughs> oh my God. it would be gone that would not last are you kidding me it would get shot <laughs> i don't know i think it might just get taken that, that one you gotta hook up a car battery to touch it and get, to get zapped uh, oh, yeah. I, survived, about, yeah. I survived a very busy work week. So, uh, in a good way though. And, and, and my work week was full of live music as it frequently is when it's a busy one like that. So no, i um, had some really, uh, fun shows and, uh, just a lot of hours, a lot of, a lot of, got a lot of steps in over a few days, but, um, you were know, you wearing a, sparkling tennis shoes? I was not wearing sparkly tennis shoes. You did find some amazing ones. I uh, did not. I learned that people that actually, well, I mean, I, this is obvious. This sounds stupid. I observed how about that, that uh, people that actually live in the country and listen to country music, they dress nice to go to a show, but they don't go like full, like, Alt country goth cowgirl sparkly shit. No, they don't. country folks tend to not do that. No, they well, don't. and it's easy to forget because I'm a little bit sparkly and I live in the city, so I uh, I was a little more. You could subdued. be an urban cowgirl. I'm a little more urban cowgirl, so I I was a little more subdued, which means that I was wearing somewhat more comfortable sh- sh- footwear, <laughs> though, than sometimes. But yeah, so no, I am. Um, it was really cool. We, you know, we had a really nice, um, there's a really, there's a country artist out of Canada. That's part of it came from was, uh, his name's Coulter Wall that I got to work on some shows with. And, uh, we hosted a really big dinner and it was really cool, but the best, and then we got to see the old 97s who are an amazing, amazing alt country band from that have been around. This was like their 30th anniversary. It was really fun. They, you, they're one of those bands that I've seen many times, but it's been a minute and it was reminded how just fucking good they are. It was just cool. Um, but one of the thing, meals I got to have as part of a big catered meal was, um, uh, this, uh, these folks that I know that have a farm out in Rockwall, Texas called Tate Farms. They did the catering and they built a Tex-Mex charcuterie board. That now, I'm not, wonderful. I don't want to put down their amazing, like just, their just, farm raised beef chili. I'm sure pie that's fine. Or their whatever. Brisket. But wait, wait, it that was, was like a, a shark- Frito pie. Like also. Like, no, that was, was it- separate. Yeah. Frito okay. pie. It was good. But I mean. I mean, it was their beef, so it was excellent, you know, but like, yeah. and then their brisket was to die for, didn't need a drop of sauce. And I'm a sauce person, so that says a lot. The fucking Tex-Mex charcuterie board. It was, there was multiples of them and it was giant. It was feet long and it had fajita meat and pork and chicken and tablitas and tamales. And I had to explain to multiple people what tablitas were and it was delicious and I was very happy about it. And mostly it was just pretty. So it was cool. It was just like a really like well done setup. That's so. very smart. No, it's super, I like when people get clever with things like that yeah. and be like, oh, hey, here's this thing. And like, here's my well, spin. And it's way better. But like, I didn't blow your mind. Like, it's way better than the original ones. Yeah. And it's like, well, it was sort of family style. So you've got that. And you got a couple things with tortillas. So you could just eat it on its own. People could try things. Like, and the tamales were cut up. So you could have like a little bite of a couple. It was just is smart. so smart. Loved it. So yeah, so that was my, that's my, I'm like, everybody's like, how was the show? I'm like, show's fine, but let me tell you about this food. Because <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, you know, but now, so now it was, it was, it's been a very good, very few, busy few days and I am in full Diana 
self-inflicted chaotic baking mode like I do every year. And I, it's a, it's a love hate. I don't actually, it's never a hate. It's a love stress, but self-induced, I know, but made progress. So marathon keeps going. I'm disappointed in Netflix number of, um, entertaining, uh, Christmas movies this year. So I don't have to move on to the it's, other channels. The other streams. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the strike and I think it just fucked everything up. Yeah. Like so. uh, they're probably like next year you're going to see like 20,000 more. So but there are some streamers. like, yeah, the, the Eddie, the Eddie Murphy one was cute. Uh, I forgot the name of that one. Oh yeah. That's on Amazon. I think. Right. I don't know. And that's on Amazon. That was cute. And then I think Netflix had the, like the family switch one. I did not watch that yet. Cause I thought babe, I want to watch it. That's yeah. No, that was cute. also cute. They're very, yeah. I, mean, I don't know what to say. I'm like, they are fine. They're few. They're fine. It's not like compelling, like, no, releases. they were. Hey, but it's you very entertaining. An in hour and a half while I fucked off and did something else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was entertained, and it was something positive. Yay! Yep, so. yep, yep. And yeah, something that's like not not too harsh and just like la la la. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, shit. brain fluff. Brain fluff. Brain, there, there's always a reason for, for some brain fluff. All right. Mm-hmm. So this. Speaking of brain fluff, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this episode reading is fundamental. This was season seven, episode 21. As I said earlier, we still have 22 and 23 to go in the season. This first aired May 4th, 2012. And this was both written and directed by Ben Edlund. So mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense when you think about all the things that are happening in this. Because there, there is like a doozy of stuff that happens in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. And then do a lot of cutting around when we start, when we kick off. We kick off in uh, with a lot of high school awards on the wall. So we've got an overachiever and cello music, which double hits on the overachiever. <laughs> um, and we learn that this young man's name is Kevin Tran, and he lives in neighbor Michigan. And we're kind of cutting back and forth between him practicing cello and Sam and Dean in a warehouse in South Chicago setting up to try to bust open the rock around the, the rock that they stole from Dick Dick's rock Dick's rock. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, lots back and forth. And we figure out that Kevin talking on the phone to his friend is he's just super obsessed with like perfect grades, perfect scores, perfect SAT because he wants to go to Princeton and that's all there is for him is Princeton. So, um, yeah. Sam and Dean are starting to unpack Dick's rock and uh, beat on it. And they uh, they got safety glasses. <laughs> I don't know. Important. Like and, like, there's nothing really, like, euphemistic about the rock. But, like, when you start talking about, like, they're beating, beating Dick's, Dick's rock. rock. Like, I, I, I can't help it. I don't know. It's, like, giggle, giggle mode. But as soon as they are able, like, as soon as he hits it, we get thunder and lightning. And then Dean, Dean points out that that might mean no, wait, stop. But he's going to do it anyways that, because that, he's that Dean. YOLO. YOLO, Dean, YOLO. And they successfully break up the rock. And as they do this, lightning flashes into Kevin's head, which seems not well through his house. I don't, I, I'm concerned about some structural integrity in the roof. And somebody's going to have to call the homeowner's insurance policy. But Kevin is lifted off the ground with glowing eyes by lightning. Yep. Yep. That's the, it, that happens. <laughs> so, and this like I guess I all I call this is a ta- what would, I call this a tablet. What did you call it? Because like it's a piece of stone with a it's bunch a of tablet. writing. That, okay. Yeah, and I was trying hard because I was like, because I know I know what it is because it's canon. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, was like, am I just calling it a tablet because I know it's a tablet? And I was just like, looking at it. So like I did call it a big rock for a little bit because I yeah. was trying to be like, okay, we. Like, I know too much, but if you call it a tablet, we'll call it a tablet. Okay. Well, then, like, I'm like, well, in modern vernacular, a tablet, I'm like, they don't have a fucking iPad, guys. This is a piece of stone of some kind with a lot of writing on it. So they get to, so Sam and Dean get to that and they're like, what the hell is this? And uh, good old Kevin's unconscious on the floor with his eyes glowing back in Michigan. And we cut. Right then to good old Cass, who was left behind in the psych ward because he took on Lucifer from Sam uh, and Meg over watching him. And uh, Cass still just suddenly sits up. So now we know Cass is awake. 
Kevin got struck by lightning and had glowy eyes and they were able to unencase de-encapsulate. I don't know. The, they the broke tablet. up the rock. Making, shit. making up shit. Yeah. The rock or the rock around the tablet. And we've got a uh, construction site where we get a reintroduction to Edgar. Because apparently Dick is calling him. And that's really all we see from that. So it's just says Dick calling on Edgar's phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder how many girls have programmed their phone that way. Anyways. Booty call. That'd be a good one. Dick. Um, yeah. So good old Kevin's on, on the floor. And now he's surrounded by broken glass, which I'm very confused about where this glass came from. Yeah, same. I was just like, wait, what? I mean, it was just a weird layout, but either way, he's getting a voicemail from his mother as, and basically saying that she's been out of town. She's going to be back that night and he's supposed to be taking a test right now at school. It's 10 a.m. He overslept. So he's panicking and rushing out the door, but his eyes keep flashing and he keeps seeing all these runes or sigils or writing, whatever this is on this tablet. Back in the warehouse... Dean's waking up and the radio's talking about all this weird lightning storm. And Sam has researching. They do see a, a movement. Coffee mug moves on its own. So Dean calls out to Bobby. And Sam's got, like, yeah, the EMF reader's going nuts. Probably is. But I guess his fight when he went almost vengeful against Dick drained his, Bob, his Bobby ghost spirit energy. Yeah, so his Bobby ghost juice is... Low. Not enough for him to be seen. Sure. The, the ghost, I feel like they're just making up the ghost shit as they I, go. I feel like it's just convenient ghost to like, uh, okay. okay. Uh, and apparently Sam reveals to Dean that uh, last night every woman that was in their last month of pregnancy went into labor when they broke open the rock. Yep. And also, there's just a whole bunch of, like, weird weather news things happening. Like, everyone's just like, we don't know what's going on, but it's weird. Yeah, it's real weird. But they cannot figure out what writing this is on the tablet at all. Nobody nobody can match it. And I, I like Dean's quote is, Big Daddy Chomper lands here and grabs himself some dick. Here we go. <laughs> so... They're just still trying to figure out what the fuck this rock is. Why Why did Dick want this? And all of a sudden, Meg calls because she's got a report that Cass is awake. Is this the first time? So I've heard the references because I follow the fandom. But And I so I know that there's the... I, I've heard... I think that she, I've heard the Bullwinkle thing before um, for, for Sam. But I don't know if I've heard it in the show yet. Is that track... I think at Crowley, all? Crowley may have called it. Oh, already. you're right. He did. You're right. Okay. I was like, I couldn't remember if I'd heard it before. But yeah. So Meg calls Sam Bullwinkle. She also calls Dean Seacrest, which was funny too. But anyway, so yeah, Castiel's awake. He's a little different and y'all better get here. So they start driving. Um, Kevin's still having these eye and rune flashes, but he's driving, which seems That's very, very dangerous. <laughs> It's like texting and driving, right? I mean, it seems worse. It's like it's like wearing like what like those like one of those ads that always have like Google Glass or something like that. It's like popping in front of your eyes while you're driving. It seems very dangerous. But I'm sure it's going to happen in like five years. So okay, oh, damn it. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Google. I didn't mean to throw your your product under the bus. It was just an example that came to mind. Um, so his friend that he talked to before is freaking out that he missed the test, and he's like. I don't know, maybe I had a seizure and his eyes are glowing. And then he just says, I've been chosen. It's my birthright. that I'm not allowed to stop. Oh, and he's driving. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know that your friend has cracked. So, <laughs> yep. Oh, no, they have a birthright now. Yeah. Well, Sam and Dean get to the hospital at Cass's at pretty quickly. Meg gets them in, and Cass is standing up. He's wearing his trench coat over his little, what do you call it? I mean, it's not a uniform, I, I guess it is, that he's wearing the white thing, scrub, well, the white his, scrubs. But it's his, like, it's just his, like, it's his clothes, his patient clothes. I guess. 
Yeah. Patient so, pajamas. Sure. But he's got his trench on. And he wants, he really wants Dean to pull his finger. And Dean hesitates, but he does. And then the lights explode. And then Cass giggles. That's it. This is funny. This is funny. Uh, so we know that Castiel remembers who and what he is. Uh, and, but he was very excited about just following a honeybee. Mm-hmm. I think Meg says he's like a naked guy at a rave since he woke up. Totally useless. But, uh, yeah, so he's just very interested in observing the world around him and keeping things simple. Uh, and, uh, he just heard a ping at eight o'clock that only angels heard. And so Sam's like, oh, did it have something to do with this? And hands him the tablet. And he's like, why, yes, it did. He said, free the word, freed the word from the vault of the earth. And hugs them. And then drops a cat penis fact. It is important. And I think I heard that happening to a poor cat outside my house last week. Ooh. I know. But I was just like, I don't, like, what, what is, do I go? Like, and I was like, and Chuck was like getting fed slurry and he was just like, slurry. And you're like, oh, the cat back there wants, really wants slurry. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Well, Cass gives us background and tells us about the fucking tablet. It was written by Metatron, who was the scribe of God, basically, right? I mean, is that, I guess, the easiest way without going back and forth? Not the Transformer, Megatron. This is Metatron. And uh, it wasn't meant for angels to read. It's meant for humans. And the Meg really wants to look at it. And Sam and Dean won't let her. So Cass gets pissed and poofs out because he does not like confrontation or conflict. And he drops the tablet and it breaks. So Dean's going to go find Cass because Meg's like, oh, he's chilling in the day room. Duh. That's where he'd be now. So Dean goes to find Cass. Well, Meg wants to appeal to Sam about this. And so somehow they end up bullshitting about this and wandering out into the hallway and leaving this very important tablet broken on the floor of Cass's room unattended. Yeah. What I the mean, fuck? Even if like you don't know what it is, like, you know what it is. Like, you know how it's, hard you it's fought to get it. Like somebody told that from Iran. Like, what the fuck do you, do you just like? Also, like, why aren't you wearing gloves? Like, all of you, like, this is a very the fuck so is dumb. wrong with you? Yeah. So, it's very, anyways, it's so you deserve what happens. Which means that somebody yanks it. It's gone, and then they see Kevin running outside, holding it to his chest. My poor dog is going to, like, freak out in a minute, by the way. So if you think, Kevin. Oh, fair. We'll try, like, it, well, I mean, <laughs> I just generally funny. refer to him as his full name, so that may help if you just say Kevin Tran. Kevin Tran. Maybe that'll help, yeah. So Meg and Sam are easily able to chase down Kevin and are very annoyed that he's just some random human teenager. And uh, he introduces himself as Kevin Tran in advanced placement. Please don't kill me. Okay. Reasonable. And he literally, well, look, it appears that he literally cannot let go of the tablet. So, either way, we've got Dean and Cass back in the day room. And Dean's, like, kind of annoyed with Cass. He's like, you just broke God's word, and I need you to get your coat on and help us take down Leviathans. And Cass yells, like, nope, sorry, and holds up the board game, sorry. So they're going to play sorry. I guess. I don't know. So... With Sam and Meg are talking to Kevin back. They're back in the room. They're in the Castfield's room. And he's like, I know what the... Kevin's like, Kevin Tran's like, I know the tablet's for me. I just don't know what the fuck it is. And he opens it up and he puts the pieces back together. That's kind of cool. And they just kind of like glue themselves back together. That's fancy. That's a good trick. Yeah. I like to be able to do that with things if I broke them. Um... But back in the day room, Kaz was just talking about, he's just, you know, you know, we were really just unsure about like which monkeys would make it. And, you know, y'all did. And it was a, you weren't as good at pose poetry as the other guys, but, you know, y'all ate the apple and invented pants. So I got, he's just like pontificating about like creation, but that's just what Cass is doing. And Dean is real impatient about this shit. Kind of reasonably so. This is kind of intense moment and Cass is just kind of back, but 
Also, Cass has been like gone basically for a while. So what do you expect him just to be like hop two? I don't know. It's just kind of weird dynamic. But they're just playing sorry while they're having this combo. And so Cass makes a pun, says we live in a sorry universe. Ha, ha, ha. So Dean's like, yeah, but you kind of, and you know, you, you did make some of the rules though. And you try to become a God and cut hole in the universe. Ta-da. And uh, Cash just wants to play the game, and Dean flips and tells him to forget the game. He well, flings I it mean, off the table. Well, and like just like it happens inevitably, like mm-hmm. in a household with any board game, with any board mad. game, some, something gets mad and throws it on the floor. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I kind of want. We to had very different don't. families. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so. But so, then, uh, yeah, so he, he throws the sorry board, and we go back to Kevin and the Blair Witch Tablet. The Blair Witch Tablet. It uh, just kept making me nauseous, and I couldn't figure out how else to describe it. Uh, it made me enough. nauseous, like the Blair Witch camera makes me nauseous. Yeah, that's reasonable. So Kevin's able to kind of read it, and he starts asking questions like, what's a Leviathan? Oh, it hurts to read it, like I'm looking through someone else's glasses, which does suck. And... But talks about how Leviathan came to be and that God locked it away. And he's come to the realization that this shit's real. And uh, and just Sam's like, uh, yes. And how do you kill them? He's like, well, it doesn't really read that way. And Meg goes all demonized and scares the fuck out of Kevin, which is kind of funny. And then there's angels. And they fling Meg. Poor thing. Angels aren't very nice, as we've learned. So we've got um, this blonde angel. We find her out. Oh, this is Hester is uh, talking about uh, to about observing a quote demon whore in a Winchester again. Ouch. And then basically is telling Sam to step away from the prophet referring to Kevin. Oh, okay. And apparently he is the sole keeper of the word on earth. We are here to take you. But there's Hester and there's a dude angel, uh, Ineas. I forgot how to say his name. Ineas, yeah. 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 And um, Meg's like, no, nope, you're not going to take him. You're not going to kill us. I have a blade. Ta-da. Here's the angel blade that I got from Cass. So Cass shows up then, luckily, because he knew there was angels there. And Hester is pissed. Because the last time they saw Cass, which was easy to forget. I didn't remember this even. And I'm like, oh, fuck, the angels hate him? Maybe. Because he went up and he smote a whole fuck ton of angels and then was like, BT dub, I'm going to be God. This is my big scary speech. Deuces. And then he just disappeared and went to Earth and yeah. tried to cut tear a hole. And that made the Leviathans. Then he walked into the water and we thought he was dead. Yeah, your friends don't usually like it when you do that. Yeah. So, uh, hmm, kind of rude. Kind of rude. Uh, but he wants to, at least like talking about perspective and then he wants her, he wants Hester to pull his finger. She does not want to pull his finger for the record. Uh, Nobody ever wants to pull the finger. Nobody wants grandpa. Nobody wants to pull the finger. No one wants to pull the finger. We all know something is going to happen. We don't want to pull the finger. Although I was very impressed by grandparent, grandfather's abilities to fart on demand. I mean... It's impressive. It is. It's slightly concerning. I don't know about that. Anyway, so Dean ha- has been waiting in the hall and did the cool angel sigil thingy on the wall and slams his hand to it and makes all the angels go away. So, ta-da! Now, now they've got three to four hours to regroup before the angels relocate them all. Kevin is freaking out. This is reasonable. Kevin just thought that his stressful day was going to be taking an exam that he was probably going to do exceedingly well on. And now he's missed that. He doesn't, he hasn't been home. God knows well, how far out of town like he is. It's his SAT. Like, and so, yes, that's a very stressful exam it in is. the day of a young man's life. Mm-hmm. Is Especially if you want to go to Princeton, your SAT is kind of. Yeah. It matters. So, yeah. And. Sam introduces Kevin to Dean. They explain to him about uh, junkless angels, which is, I mean, relevant information, I guess. And 
he's it's Kevin shares and and it's like kind of an interesting description that the tablet is kind of like a in case of emergency note. Okay. That's helpful. Um, but he really doesn't want to be a prophet, which is also reasonable. (laughs) No, not, not something that everybody would choose. So they're going to haul ass to Rufus's cabin and they're driving in what appears to be a pretty cool, though, very beat up seventies Range Rover with a uh, sigil spray painted on the hood in, you know, pretty large. So, you know, there you go. And they stop at a mini mark where Sam happens to notice a news report about Kevin being a missing person and a federal and a federal manhunt going on for him. And Meg sees demon truckers in the parking lot. Also, there's a commercial from Biggerson that plays in the background that says like, it's like a salad bar, but with pie. (laughs) That's amazing. I immediately want to go to Biggerson's. I don't really care if you're going to eat me. Give me a turducken. That's fine. It's fine. I would like a salad bar with pie. Yeah. That sounds amazing. But with pie. Yes. Though, I think it's in... Oh, where is it? There is a place that reminded me of that. It's on 45. It was like, it's probably a cruise ship. but Well, that too. But there is a place that's like, like buffet, like southern buffet. And it was kind of good and they definitely had like an array of pies i was very happy i have eaten there i would go again um was it old country buffet no i've been to that this is like a one-off it's not a chain the ocb all. no i know it was, it was not a, a one-off crowd. single family buffet interesting like I had to find out what that is. I will locate yeah, it for you. Find... I'm sure it's been on diners. That sounds like something that would be on diners, dives, diner drivers and dives. That one, yeah, triple D, triple D mm-hmm. with Guy Fieri, who I love. Um. Anyway, so they're like, they're like, well, this is bad. There's also d- uh, demon truckers, which also sounds like a psychobilly it's song. Not a band. I was gonna say a song. It's, it's a psychobilly like song. song. It, I'm pretty sure it's a psychobilly band. If there hasn't been a band named Demon Truckers, I would be very surprised. Mm, same. So they uh, they're they're making it, but while they're all, while they're driving, Cass calls Mag, and he's in Perth, surrounded by unhappy dogs, and they piece together that he is at a dog racing track in Australia. Um, and uh, Meg shares that they're unhappy because the rabbit isn't real, or is already dead. So. Uh, and, uh, so he boops himself into the, poofs himself into the back seat and boops Kevin on the nose, which Kevin does not appreciate at all. Uh, but he's like, yeah, those angels were from my old garrison and we was, we were assigned to watch the earth and it was real fucking boring. So, and, uh, he explains that the, because the word of God's been revealed, the keeper of the word awakens, boops Kevin again. And says, I have to take him to the desert to learn the word away from man. Hmm. But they got to duck Hester if they want to keep the word instead of hand- letting Kevin take it to the desert. Which seems like kind of important since it's Leviathan related right now. But Cass has no interest in fighting anymore. So he isn't really taking a side other than to kind of help them keep the book from Hester. Or the tablet. So they get to the cabin and, and he's, you know, they, they, they can't put in at, uh, the angel expelling sigils on the walls. Otherwise, Cass can't stay. So it's just got to be the stuff that makes them hard to find. And they go to where Dean has tortured demons to death and Leviathans in the basement. Him and Dean and Kevin go down there and Kevin rightfully asks if this is a sex torture dungeon. <laughs> Dean confirms that it's not. But it was funny. Very funny. So, um, they're like, Cass has ta- trying to talk to Sam upstairs. He's like, you seem troubled, but that's like a primary aspect of your personalities. And I just tend to ignore it. Fair. And Sam's like, no, I've just been thinking a lot about you. And asks if he, and he asks if he's if Cassie's Lucifer. And Cass's like, yeah, I did it first. But I think it was just a projection, like an aftertaste from you. Um, you know, and I was done for it first, too. It was just a lot of the weight of all the all the mistakes and all the lives. Uh, and then I took on your pain. 
And so it kind of changed like my perspective and Sam's like, no, I realized that you were trying to help that they, you know, that they all want to do what it takes for Cass to get better now. And Cass is like, what do you mean get better? I'm fine. I just want to watch She's... Bumblebees. I'm good. But uh, Kenny starts, uh, Kenny, Kevin Tran, <laughs> oh, Lord. Kevin Tran is writing down all the notes from the tablet though. So he is on a mission doing his homework in his little notepad, trying to transcribe it. Uh, but he gets real freaking dizzy. He's like, this is too much. I'm a kid from Michigan and I'm not prepared to factor supernatural into my world. And has to breathe into a paper bag for a little while. And Dean tries to commiserate. He's like, yeah, you're chosen and it sucks. Hmm. But guess what? Angels don't care. They're not equipped to care. And Ke Kevin's like, I just want to be the first Asian American president of the United States. So, And Dean says, do your homework and leaves him there to keep transcribing. But outside we've got Meg because she's got to go confront the fucking trucker demons and they call her a skank immediately and ask what and that's not your word Roscoe mm -hmm. you can't use that mm -hmm. yeah and she tells uh, Roscoe that she's got a present for Crowley and acts like she's going to hand over Cass and I'm like oh fuck is Meg going to double cross no she's not Roscoe's a dummy, and so was his sidekick, and she stabs both of them, kills them both in the street, and then walks away and sneaks back, tries to sneak back into the cabin. But Sam, Dean, Cass, and Kevin, I guess, were all waiting for her and trapped her in a devil's trap. Boom. And she's like, Well, maybe you should have said something, Meg. Yeah. Like, why didn't you, like, hide this? It looks very sus. Damn, I don't, so. I still don't understand why you didn't say anything. So sus. So avoidable. So sus and avoidable. Like, come on. Ugh. Annoying. Because now she's got to convince them that she's still on the same side. Cass has to corroborate that there's other demon blood on this fucking blade. Oh, and BT Dub, she gets to give her little mini monologue about this, like how she found her cause. Her cause used to be Lucifer and and Yellow Eyes, but now now it's bringing down the king, and that's Crowley. So she's all in on it, and she's like, you know what? I'm not going to screw over Sam and Dean, or the only angel who will go to bat for me. But here's the problem her killing these demons has now put a beacon on them to the angels. So now the angels know where the fuck they are. That sucks. Well, it's also that none of like, neither Sam or Dean give a fuck about Crowley right now because they're like, they're not, no. that's not the problem this season. No, it's not the problem. And she's like, he's always the problem. Like, which I think is kind of an interesting thing to, you know, that she says. It's true. That is true. But they're so like, everything's so Leviathan focused. Like we're not even talking about Crowley. He said he didn't even make the radar. So Hester's there now. She blows the door off. She's pissed that Castiel helped Sam, Dean, and Meg take the profit. Dean's like, mm, yeah, because he needs to help clean up the mess. This is all needed. This mess caused by an angel. So yeah, he's helping. <laughs> and Cass is like, yep, yep, that's pretty much what's happening here. And Hester is big mad though. There's no convincing her, and she really fucking hates the Winchesters apparently, uh, and uh, wants Dean to pay, and Cass has to intervene, and Hester loses her shit, and is just, like, punching the sh shit out of Castiel. But Meg kills Hester. Surprise! That's kind of like, I was kind of worried about a lot of blowback in the scene when that happened. Um, because is, is it feed into the perception about Meg being a demon and being on the other side, but she just killed a demon, she just killed an angel, but she's got this weird attachment with Cass. And is it just because it's to her benefit or is it because her and Cass bonded because she was looking after him because she seems to like him because he looks after her or like seems to like her. It's a very odd, odd, odd. Like I was like, oh shit. But, well, we kind of do like a little scene cut to the next morning or whatever. And uh, Ineas is like, hey, Castiel, you should come with us. And Cass is like, no. Kevin's finished transcribing the word. He gives it over to Sam. There's two new angels now hanging out. And Ineas is like, hey, 
we're going to take the keeper home and we're just going to look after him there because that seems better than taking him to the fucking desert. And then maybe he can like take his SATs, I guess, or something. But they flap out. And Dean realizes that he can't find Meg, though, right now. And Sam has searches through the tablet transcription and he found the line about how to kill a Leviathan. <sighs> Slay by a bone of a righteous mortal washed in the three bloods of the fallen. First being a fallen angel. So Cassius holds his arm out, says, always happy to bleed for the Winchesters. And I don't know if he's being slightly sarcastic or serious. No, but then he also like just kind of like poofs his blood into a little bottle. A little bottle and that just seems really convenient. It make blood tests a lot easier. Right? Ugh. So Cass, Dean's like, well, Cass, what are you going to do? And he's like, I don't know. And he poofs out. Back at good old Kevin's house, though, he is getting returned by three angel men in weird suits, and his mom is very upset. Uh, and there is the this federal investigator who was on the news there with her, and she's like, who are these guys? And Kevin's like, it's cool, they're keeping me safe. And the bald cop, cop guy's like, rock beat scissor. And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? This is real weird. And then he reaches inside the angel and makes one of the angels do the black veiny thing and black goo come out of his mouth. And then he does it to the other one and says, Leviathan beats angel. No! It's Edgar. The fad was Edgar all along. Yeah. Yeah. So now we don't have the Teladens. That's it. God damn it. <sighs> Yeah. So, yeah, do you have any curtains? Uh, Casting. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple. Casting couch. Casting couch. It's the casting couch. Were they on that show that time with that guy? La 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 la. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for cast we've got this week, um, Kevin Tran was played by Osric Chow. Uh, he was Nima in the movie 2012. He was the blacksmith's assistant in The Man with the Iron Fists. Uh, he's been a reoccurring character named Ryan in the Flash series and, uh, and, uh, and also a character, a recurring character in the Nancy Drew series recently. Hester was played by Emily Holmes. She's been in episodes of shows like Dead Like Me, L Word, Fringe, Alcatraz, Lucifer, and The Order. Uh, she was Ashley in Snakes on a Plane. I get to make that reference any, you know, anytime I will. Uh, and she was uh, one of the moms in the Wicker Man movie. Roscoe was played by Bob Fraser. He's been in episodes of X-Files, Travelers, and Arrow. And he was... Um, the homeless father in the 2012 film, A Christmas Story 2. And then Ineas was played by Adrian Glenn McMorrin. He was a bartender in the film 5050. Uh, that was with the was a real sad movie with Joseph Gordon Levitt and Seth Rogen. Um, he was, plays Michael slash Murmur in Arrow as a reoccurring character. And he's been in episodes of shows like uh, Charmed and the new series Superman and Lois. New, old, new, new, yeah. It's a new, yeah. it's a new Superman and Lois series. I don't know. Another yeah. one? Don't see that for you. I don't know. <sighs> Fucking Superman. Anyway, it's cool. <sighs> yeah. So what do you think of the episode? I, uh, so there was, I really liked some of the info that the, we got in this episode. Like, I think it really like brought us around like a lot of the storyline like finally like okay we've got a fucking lead on the leviathan story right it's not just there's an end there... yes. this is not just the an <laughs> unkillable big bad that will like last for eternity but it's also like a it's also like i don't know it was kind of and annoying, I guess is the word I would use. I don't know how else to say it without, I'm not, I'm not mad at the episode. It was an, an entertaining episode. 
it's just like, I was just like, I don't understand. The, I, I feel like the, like the way the writing is with the relationship with the Meg, Meg and the Winchester brothers. I think that she understands the relationship. They're not on the same, like they're not friends, but they're on the same team and they don't seem to get that, but she kind of has a perception about it. And I feel like that kind of like, and I get why they don't trust, but at the same time, it's like at some point, if you're gonna be on the same team, you kind of have to a little bit. And then so that's kind of like, ugh. and then I don't know, poor, poor Kevin. I feel like they just really like dug in on that trope or stereotype. I don't know. And then, but other than that, like I I was like, I was already, I was like, oh shit, Hester going to be a big bitch in this. And then Hester's dead real fast. I was like, oops, I miscalculated that. So she got too mad, went too far, got herself killed. But I was very relieved when I realized that Kevin was able to hand over the notes before he got back to his mom's. But now I feel bad because the going to get him. Yeah, sad. But yeah. Who knows what happens to Kevin Tran? I bet we never find out. We never find out what happens to The Kevin, mystery of Kevin the Tran, Tran family. Unsolved. That is actually the whole... <laughs> the unsolved mystery of Kevin Tran is just the rest of Supernatural. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. What about you? Uh, I mean, I'm glad, you know, we're getting close to the end of the season. You know, Leviathan is not a storyline a lot of people love. And I don't know. It'll be nice to see what happens to Dick. Maybe. (laughs) I don't know what's going to happen to Dick. I hope nothing good. I don't think it's going to leave that on Tondra there. All right. Cheers, Dirk. Okay, cheers, Pitch. Devil's Trap Podcast is a Don't Get It production. Meow. Devil's Trap Podcast is part of the Ship It Studios Podcast Network. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter at Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us at Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share with all your friends. We're at all your favorite podcast outlets and at devilstrappodcast.com. I'm Babe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Devil's Trap Podcast.